Tile sets in due process each shift and evolve over time, but their core structure usually stays the same. For the uninitiated, a tile set in due process is a collection of models and textures that belong to a specific type of map generation. Maps are procedurally assisted in their generation, and each type of map adheres to a few rules to keep the game strategic and engaging. Each tile set has characteristics that make them unique to the others. We all know the classic three tile sets, Sea Store, Kill House, and Factory, but Dome is its own beast. Dome was designed from the ground up to be a mid to long range map with a series of themed rooms. It's a game show. It's ludicrous and completely over the top. Dome's design goal was to provide something uniquely due process, something that the art team could be really proud of and something that would pop in a trailer. It still plays like a tactical shooter, but it looks nothing like one. Gameplay wise, Dome is pretty straightforward. It's actually a lot of people's favorite tile set to play. In fact, I'd say Dome has a much more explicit personality, purpose, and design goal than Factory, for example. While we'll surely get a Factory overhaul in the future, for now, Dome has gone fairly unchanged and consistently delivers. Dome is a lot like Factory. It's a long range map with a breaker, it has a room with dangerous floors, it has vertical combat, it has powerful high ground elements, and it's separated into a large open main area and a bunch of rooms that support that. Kill Dome, partially because it's new, does not have as many rooms as the other tile sets. Beach, base, observation, castle, jungle, pit. Maybe one day we'll get a Wild West saloon or something, but for now, this is what we've got. First of all, Dome has an inherent quality. Nearly all objects are bulletproof. The only exceptions are the drawbridge and some of the smaller props. That means unlike Factory, Sea Store, and Kill House, no weapon can penetrate Dome. So with wallbang setups off the table for both teams, it simplifies the general strategy a little bit. This helps make Dome a more consistent tile set. Sightlines that watch the bomb tend to be Castle's battlements or the jungle's ruins. Let's break down each room. Castle can spawn anywhere on the map. It will always spawn with battlements surrounding it. There will often be clutter inside of it like hay bales or barrels. All castles contain a drawbridge. The drawbridge is open and closed with a button. Either team can also kick the drawbridge down, but only from the inside. The drawbridge is also door chargeable. This is a little known mechanic, and it actually makes a couple maps very interesting. You can bypass the button entirely and rush the castle this way. Another little known fact is borrowed from a popular franchise. The cracked walls are, let's say, bombable. Don't sweat though, you don't need to look at the texture to know this. Any wall that faces outward and isn't covered up can be wall charged. Some fun things to try in a castle are to kick the drawbridge down intentionally and place barbed wire in that space. Stairwells inside the castle are great for making obnoxious pixel peaks. Stand on the stairs and use them to minimize how much of your character is showing from the battlements. Castles tend to be prime red door breach potential. They give you a bunch of room to play around with minimal threat from the defenders. The main way to approach a castle breach as attackers is to figure out if the defenders can use the castle's drawbridge, doors, or battlements against you. A lot of castles generate against exterior walls. These walls will usually grant you full vision of what's going on inside, meaning an attacker who stays outside the building can make callouts during the push. The next room is Dome's significant set piece. Observation is a room covered top to bottom in one-way screens. While not realistic by any means, these TVs will display whatever is going on behind them as if they were glass, but only on the inside. From the outside, you'll see nothing. Whoever controls this room has total knowledge of everything around them. However, they can't shoot back either. Like I said earlier, pretty much everything is bulletproof. Take care not to clip your character through the TVs or reveal you're up there by making a lot of noise. The threat of the unknown is often disproportionately powerful. Put simply, observation is very scary for attackers. Anything can swing out at a moment's notice. If attackers can gain advantage by quickly taking observation, it is wise as a defender to shoot out the TVs. People tend to use a shorty or gat 9 for this. Don't waste primary ammo on it. You should shoot these out during the setup phase wherever the attackers would immediately gain a sight line. Okay, next up is jungle, and jungle is a pretty straightforward room but it has a couple quirks. First of all, the jungle ruins is not wall chargeable, even if it looks like a normal wall. Second of all, the water that spawns in jungle makes noise when the players move through it. It doesn't even matter if you're walking, crouching, or sprinting, the players can always hear the water. A cool strategy you can employ at the bridge is to play underneath it. You're hard to see and it forces the attackers to check a lot more angles. And if they don't, well, you're there to shoot them. Generally, ruins is a high ground position that is very valuable. It is always a good idea to have someone playing in the ruins. Pit is a pretty wild room. The only pathable terrain in Pit is a thin catwalk that rarely expands beyond a single tile width. And the floor beneath it is lava. Pit can often have some parkour and it usually one-way jumps from a stairwell to a catwalk 
or from one catwalk to the other if the gap is only a tile wide. Taking pit early in a round can often feel dangerous. I've seen a lot of casual players get scared of pit and often avoid it from bad experiences. This is largely rooted in fallacy. Often, bad habits that casual players have, such as not flashing deep on entry or smoking themselves off, results in a failed push immediately. Pit exacerbates these issues. Pit is a great spot to take. It often houses power or a pathway into observation. Because of the nature of the catwalk, it's a lot easier to predict enemy positions, and when the attackers can predict defenders, flashbangs will carry you to victory. As for defenders, the same logic applies. If attackers are forced to walk along a one tile wide gap, that means barbed wire is very, very strong here. Finally, we have the fan favorite room and its counterpart, beach and base. Beach, otherwise known as D-Day, is always the green door if it is present on a map. Most domes have a beach, but not all of them. Beach offers a challenging but rewarding entry into the map. Attackers will need to kick the beach door. They cannot shotgun it. They can, however, set up smoke grenades on the battlements by tossing them out of the lander. This is actually really easy. All you gotta do is place a smoke puck here, claim it, stand in the lander, throw a smoke up in the air forward, and just like that, you've smoked two of the bunkers at the same time. Careful though, of course they can still shoot you through the smoke grenades, so it's a good idea to have someone fire back through the smoke while you're kicking. Strangely, you can actually use a door charge on the beach to blow the lander door open. I've seen this maybe twice ever, so it's not entirely useless, but not something you might ever see realistically. Beach can spawn with a few objects in it, like a sand dune and a smoke emitter. Watch out for these on the map, they can determine how some fights play out. As for base, it's a bit of a rat's nest. These are more Viet Cong tunnels than anything World War II related. Of course, you can use the bunker to shoot attackers as they come up from the beach, but there's more to base than just getting some initial damage. Ratting inside base as a defender can be brutal for Argus. There are just so many spots to check, all while you might be getting shot at from every other spot on the map. Attackers need to have a confident plan for base that doesn't just involve let's drop into base. Crims can be hiding all throughout base, especially behind the tall crates or under the bridges. Bunkers are safe spots too, believe it or not. You can easily hide right next to one. Playing base is especially strong when someone in observation can make callouts for you. I like to make a series of callouts in the planning phase for each lane of the base's tunnels, and then use those to call where people drop. Another stupid trick you can do, and I hope this gets removed at some point, is that you can throw molotovs, or stolen frag grenades, into the lander to deal lots of damage. The throw is really easy to do, you can do it from anywhere in base. So that's all the rooms in dome as of yet. To wrap things up, here's a few more dome tricks. Don't walk around the map, walk under it. The pit and beach are three floor rooms, so you can't walk under them. Neither UAV is present on dome and is instead replaced with four stationary guns. Don't forget, the truck has a turret too. These five turrets are all that stop defenders from leaving the map, so on occasion, they can make a blind spot. That means runouts are totally possible, just really tough to spot. Exterior windows are generated occasionally on the middle or main floor. They always generate on the top floor. You can almost always see people if they're on the third floor, usually up in ruins. If you have second floor windows, use them. They're useful for both teams. Defenders can call utility they see moving in, especially items like the wall charge. Attackers can use these windows to great effect by calling out the positions of the defenders inside. And just a quick reminder, windows like most things on dome are bulletproof. And honestly, that about wraps it up for dome. Dome is a pretty cool tile set, but a lot of new players have some trouble with it. Hopefully this cleared up some confusion about some of the elements of the map for newer players. In the next video, we're going to go over a topic that I think a lot of players could benefit from, and that's going to be weapon penetration.